Uh, very privileged here to interview uh, Chris Duran of Terra Fugia, uh, which is um, uh, going to be explained to me. We need to explain the word first, if you'd be so kind. <laughs> Terra Fugia is Latin for escape the earth. So it's a very uh, appropriate name for our company that's uh, producing flying cars. Indeed. Now, I heard the presentation, so I've had a bit of a, a head start on this one. Uh, so um, I'm right to say that you've got an unusual wing because you need the bottom flat because you fold the wing in. We're going to video that in a minute, I hope. That's right. We're going uh, to video right? the, the unfolding of the wing. Yep. So it's a, it's a unique kind of uh, condition, right? Yep. Where in the, in the configuration we're in now with the wings folded, it's a, it's a roadworthy automobile. Indeed, right? that yes. can operate yes. up to uh, 70 miles an hour. It uh, is certified oh. to operate on U.S. highways. Right. right? And when we uh, unfold the wings, it's a FAA certified light sport aircraft. Okay. So and the range, uh, this is not your latest model, of course. You're, you're moving very fast. You're doing vertical takeoff. Is that right as next, well? The next generation will be yes. vertical takeoff. This yes. is the first uh, aircraft, the first product that we'll bring to market. I see. Right, so, so you'll stay with this type. That's right. Because it'd be more energy efficient. Well, suppose, well yeah. we, we can bring this to market quickly and it's a proving ground for us yes. for the next generation of aircraft. All right. right. So All we right. certainly intend to move right. on to urban mobility vehicles, to to aircraft that have vertical takeoff and landing capabilities. Yes. But our first iteration is one that operates yeah. from airports. Yes. But you yeah. can garage at your yeah. home. Right? Yeah. You can drive to the airport. Unfold the wings and fly yep. to your destination. Yep. Fold the wings up and drive oh, really to cool. drive to your business yeah. meeting. Right. You've amazed this audience. This uh, three thousand five hundred delegates here. They all come to your stand. <laughs> and we have had the quite, quite a uh, number of people visit <laughs> us. Absolutely <laughs> marvelous. Absolutely <laughs> marvelous. So tell me about some of the technologies. Um, you've obviously developed a number of different technologies. You have to because a lot of things are not just available off the shelf. Um, can you tell me what sort of new technologies are, are in this? Actually, our, our philosophy is one more of, a, of taking existing technologies and combining them in new, in new ways. Ah, right? Right. But there are some things that are, that are relatively new. In, in, in this situation, we're using an, a certified aircraft engine that powers the, the aircraft when it's flying, and it also produces energy for our electric drive system. That's right? a Rotax energy. That's right, it's a Rotax engine that's, uh, that's readily available. It's a 100 horsepower engine. Right? Okay. But we have a, a hybrid electric system, right? Yes. And we use electric motors to drive the wheels for the ground vehicle. So you have quite so, a large battery in as a hybrid. It's actually not that very not that yeah. very large because we can continuously produce power from the from oh, the gasoline motor. Indeed, right, right. And the motor is one that, uh, in this condition, mm. we want to be able to drive up to a regular gas mm. station in the United yeah. States. Yeah. And we pump uh, premium unleaded fuel into it, just like any other car. So, right? so that that's uh, obviously a non-sulfur fuel, and it costs less. That's right. Yeah, it's much less expensive is, than aviation yeah. gas. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. And I think one of the arguments that I heard in the presentation was that it's not really you're going to be flying out of Kennedy anytime soon. No, 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 no. It's really the case that in America, but also other places, I've seen it in uh, in, in Mexico, a lot of airports, uh, air, air, air strips, and in so the, on. In the U.S., there's more than 5,000 general aviation air, airports, wow. right? Yeah. So any one of yeah. them capable of, of yeah. having us take off or land. And they don't have an Uber. They don't have, no. uh, you know, a readily available aircraft to fly with. You know, if you look at if you look at the vast uh, stretches in the Midwest and the west part of the United States, there are lots of locations where people have their own grass strip or their own dirt strip, right? Ah, uh, yes. So there, yes. there are plenty of places, ranchers, for instance, mm. who fly all the time right? and this could take off on grass absolutely mm -hmm. interesting and we're talking two-seater here but we you, you the next do have an ongoing four roadmap four seats right. yep. yes 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 the, the, yeah this this aircraft is designed under the FAA light sport aircraft regulations yes, yes. and that requires two seats it was yes. a set of regulations developed uh, for the home builders who wanted to expand into producing aircraft yes. for the masses, yes. right? Yes. So the FAA created a new set of regulations, yes. simplified, uh, self-certifying, yes. an yes. easy way for those people to come to market. Yeah. So we've certified yeah. under that, that yeah. set of regulations. It also mm. requires a certified pilot, but one with, that only requires half the amount of training Ah, as, as a normal right. pilot license, right? Ah, so in 20 indeed. hours, you can quickly yeah, get your yeah, sport yeah. pilot certificate, yeah. right? And be ready to fly yeah, one of these. Yeah. So this is not really that fully autonomous aircraft that's the next generation, right? Yeah. 
that doesn't require a pilot or requires no, no, sure. an untrained yeah. pilot, right? Yeah. This is the first step in that path. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yes, we've noticed, I mean, the first stage of uh, electrification of aircraft seemed to us, in terms of full electrification, uh, seemed to us to be really sailplanes. Okay. And the sailplanes um, are, are of limited use, presumably. Just, I mean, they, they have, um, instead of using the string to pull them up there, they sometimes have had simple uh, internal combustion engines. Sure, and power gliders replaced, have been around for, but, I mean, for a long time. But, I mean, that's very limited. That's right. Yes, yes. And in this case, you know, a power glider is a, is a wonderful machine. It's a, it's a heavier sailplane, so it, it has a little bit less range, but they're great because you don't need a tow plane, right? You, you don't need somebody else yeah. to help you to get up yeah. to altitude yeah. to, to soar. That's not really what we're looking for. No. For us, it's the ability to drive to and from the airport that you operate from. Oh, absolutely, from, right? yes. So it's, yeah. it's a bit of yes. a different, uh, different situation for yes. us. It's a dream that's been around in aviation since the 1920s. Yes. And a number yes. of different yes. companies along the way have tried yes. to develop this, yeah. this kind of a product. Yeah. Yeah. They always started with a car that they tried to make fly. Yes, yes. And we've gone yes. the other way. We've ah, started with an right. airplane design, yeah. and we've turned it into yeah. an automobile as yeah. well, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So our founder yeah. likes to call it a rotable aircraft rather than a flying car. Well, right, okay. <laughs> but I think uh, this, it seems to me that another thing that's, uh, if not unique, very unusual in your case is that in, in the, in the exact opposite of taking a sailplane and changing the motor, uh, you are putting an enormous amount of effort into safety. You, well, you seem to have done an enormous number of things. I mean, I'm not aware of other aircraft that can parachute down on an emergency basis. But there are there are uh, aircraft out there that do that now, but relatively non-stalled. We, yeah. We've also designed in the automotive safety aspects of the aircraft. Yeah. And I'm going to introduce you to Carl Dietrich. Hello, Carl. Who's, who's our, our CTO yeah. and one of the founders of our company. Yes. And I think he'll be happy to explain yeah, right, right. Uh, in great detail the technical aspects of of the transition. Yes, sure. good. Okay, Carl. Right. Well, um, we, we've uh, got the background and I think we've got the message that uh, a bit like by aerospace who are talking here shortly, they've mm -hmm. uh, not taken a sailplane, they've started from scratch and it's a, a from the ground up an aircraft, in that case pure electric conventional aircraft, no, it's complementary to yours, it's not I think competitive, Correct. Uh, yeah. but in your case you seem to have really gone from the ground up and we've got to the point of um, saying that uh, it seems that you have unusually put enormous effort into safety. Can That's you tell correct. us a bit more about that? Sure, yeah. Well, uh, there are a very large number of both physical and what I would call psychological safety systems embedded into the design of the transition because the transition is still controlled by a pilot and by far the largest source of aviation fatalities are caused by the pilot. So the more we can help he or she make safe decisions, the safer a product we will have in the end. So first, I'll go through some of the, the do, technical, yes, yes, uh, yes. physical safety features. Yes. So as Chris mentioned to you, we do have a full aircraft parachute, and that's always a last resort. But uh, beyond that, we use a very, very safe, well-proven certified aircraft engine that's certified to run on automotive the Rotex, gas loads, yes. the Rotax 912 yes. IS Sport. Uh, we also have a, a motor generator on the shaft of the engine. Yes. So in the, en in the event of uh, an engine failure, something like that, we could potentially give you a little extended glide range with this uh, engine. In addition, one of the unique capabilities that that gives you is if you're operating out of a high density altitude airport, you can kick in a little bit of extra power, 20% extra power to climb out ah. if, you're, uh, if you're not achieving your desired climb ah. rate. So it's a very, very nice safety feature to have on board the aircraft uh, that a pilot can implement as needed. Just being yes. able to kick yes. in some extra power is, yes. is incredibly valuable. I've heard that's uh, an issue with uh, helicopters with uh, when helicopters crash, it's um, you, you lose control completely. So if you had an, a, a, an auxiliary pure electric drivetrain that, that couldn't hold the helicopter up, but it would uh, give you a little measure of control as you were coming to Earth, that's very important. And yes. is that what you're doing in a somewhat similar way? You're getting a little more control that you wouldn't have an otherwise in a disaster uh, scenario. You could or? think about it that way. It's yeah. extending the glide. So yeah. even if you had a complete failure of all power systems on yes. board the transition, you could still control it and fly it safely down to a, a gliding landing. Right. So that's a safety feature right there that most people gotcha. don't appreciate about any fixed no, no, wing aircraft. Yes. Right? So yes. it's, yes. it's uh, a, yes. a very nice thing to have 
uh, in any general aviation aircraft, but with our uh, hybrid electric system, we can give an extra power boost and extend that glide range uh, quite a bit farther than you would otherwise be able to achieve. But you've got um, interesting aerodynamics as well. We do. Yes, we do have yes. some very interesting aerodynamic features. Uh, one of those features is that the uh, the design of the rear end of the vehicle as it goes into the the propeller as the air flows into the propeller. Uh, it, you, in general, uh, if you are at a high angle of attack, mm. so the aircraft is at a large angle relative to the, the free stream air, gotcha. uh, that's when you a vehicle would normally stall. Uh, yeah. So the airflow would separate from the wing and the wing would lose lift. Yes. And this is involved in one of the leading causes of fatal aircraft accidents that drives loss of control. Right. Uh, stall at low altitude, yep. uh, which then you lose control. Yep. The transition we've designed so that the airflow separates near the root of the wing first, yeah. and we maintain very good flow over the outboard oh, section. Oh, we of saw the that in the presentation. The right. telltales were going mental here. Right, and, here and they were very laminal. smooth. And that, this is where you control the wall remarkable. of the aircraft. And, right? And has so, that been done before? Y yes, there are other aircraft Some. that do that type of yeah. thing as well. But it's a very important safety feature yeah, yeah. Uh, that allows you to to control the aircraft while you're fully stalled. The other very neat thing about this design is that because we have the propeller back here, when the air starts to separate at, at a stall, the airflow goes through the propeller and you change the loading on the engine and the propeller. So you hear the stall warning, okay? Ah, right. And from a a, the psychology uh, of a pilot, yes. nothing gets the attention of a single engine pilot more <laughs> than their engine making some strange noise. Of course. Okay, because you course, rely on right. that engine, right? Yes. So this is a, a very effective stall warning system okay. uh, for the aircraft. In addition, once you do stall, the nose will bobble and things of that nature, but you won't break off to the side. So it's a very, very benign stall characteristic. And I guess in so, addition, sorry to interrupt, please, but yeah. bird strike, uh, you're less vulnerable than having the propeller here. Is that right? Uh, a little. I would say the, the propeller is better protected, particularly when you're driving on the road from road debris with ah, the wings folded up, that course, sort of thing. New, yeah, new problem. Yes. Yeah, and also, <laughs> also you could say bird yes. strike as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, one of the other interesting safety features on the, the transition is actually has to do with the fundamental design of the vehicle. So the center of gravity of the, the transition is about here, near the quarter cord of the wing. Yeah. That allows us about a 50-50 weight distribution on the yes. wheels, which is very good for handling on the road. Ah. But in addition to that, when you're, uh, when you're flying, what this means is most aircraft have their, their re main gear very close to their center of gravity to allow them to pitch the nose up yeah, uh, yeah, very yeah, early to yeah, do uh, yeah. soft field takeoffs and things of that nature. We can't do that in the transition. But what that means is that we, we're gonna have a longer ground roll on yes. takeoff, but by the time you get to the point where the vehicle lifts off, it just flies off the ground very simply, and you have quite a bit of extra energy, which ah. translates to extra stall margin, right? Ah, so you're yes. going to be, as soon as you're in the air, you have extra stall margin, extra energy, you're not as close to falling out of the sky again as you were in a normal mm. uh, aircraft on takeoff. Mm. In addition, because of the location of the rear wheels far after the center of gravity, your smoothest landing will be coming in with a little bit of extra power. So what that means is in all low altitude operations around your runway, you're flying with more stall margin because pilots want to make smooth landings, right? So on all the approach and landing when, when you have the most common occurrence of stall spin and loss of control, you're operating at all phases of flight near the ground with higher stall margin than you would otherwise in a normal aircraft. So all, all of these, it's a connection between the physical and the psychological safety that we implement on this vehicle. In addition with the four wheels, uh, all far away from the center of gravity of the vehicle, any, you come down in almost any configuration and it's very stable landing. So it's very, very hard to, to you know, have an unsafe uh, landing in this vehicle. It's, it's just more robust than okay. anything else oh, that that's you have lovely. out there. So, so it's, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, not at all. Um, the, I just want to get clear, um, you have this product, you are now in parallel working on vertical takeoff, but this product itself could have an, 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 an extended life as it transitions to fuller hybrid, to pure electric, to extremely short takeoff and landing, or at least short takeoff and landing. You could have a whole roadmap. Have you got something like that, or is it in your mind that 
this is your first um, product, and then you're going to go 100% into vertical takeoff. Which which is well, the route? Well, this is our first product. There are, um, I'm sure, improvements that we will make on this vehicle. In fact, one of the things that I'm very interested in is incorporating uh, more advanced avionics in the vehicle uh, to allow us to do advanced flight planning, uh, advanced route planning, that sort of thing that takes into account weather, that helps the, the pilot make safer decisions. Um, that sort of thing, really, this is, this is all about lowering the barriers to entry, making it easier to fly, making it safer. Right now, flying a general aviation is, uh, aircraft is safer than uh, uh, riding a motorcycle, mm. but that's not saying much. Mm. Uh, it's, it's not as safe as driving your car. Mm. It's not even as safe as riding a bicycle right now. Mm. With the transition, we believe that it will be possible to bring the level of safety to the point where we can say, look, Flying this flying car is actually safer than riding a bicycle, uh, statistically speaking. And potentially, with increasing levels of autonomy that we can bring into the cockpit, we may be able to get it to the level of safety of an automobile today. So you're Which, thinking of going to four CISA? Uh, not in the transition. Ah, so right. the transit. So s developing a physical airframe is a very big investment. It's mm -hmm. a very big deal. So uh, we're we're unlikely to change the physical. Okay characteristics of this vehicle. Yep. We are likely to increase the, the brains, as it were, yep. making, it, making it easier to operate and yeah. safer to operate yeah. as time goes on. Um, already as it is, just our launch product, we're expecting to be one of the safest aircraft that you can buy yeah, yeah, for yeah. personal yeah. flight. Yeah, clearly. So. Uh, have you flown that? Uh, I, I don't... Uh, three or four times, something like that. I mean, we have a professional test pilot who does most of the flying, but I've... Uh, that, that's why, and we try to keep this vehicle in the air as much as possible with the professional test pilots. But so, I've, I've very much enjoyed my time in the cockpit. Wonderful. It's a very stable aircraft. That's one of the other safety features. Uh, we designed it to have a rather heavy stick. This is a cruiser of an aircraft. This is not, uh, a lot of little airplanes are de designed to be really aerobatic or yank and bank kind of flying. Uh, this is all designed around encouraging safe operations. The weekend getaway vehicle, you know, mm -hmm. where you take it up. So we have a little bit of a heavier stick. Uh, feels more like a larger airplane uh, than it is. Uh, so it, it, it uh, really, from every aspect, uh, from the physical safety to the psychological safety of the, the, the people who are going to be flying it, it's all around about making it safer. And more accessible and more in that although yeah. you need a pilot's license, there is probably less training required. That's correct. The, the vehicle's designed to fit inside the, the light sport aircraft category. The sport To get a sport pilot certificate, there's a 20-hour training minimum, which is half the minimum time to get a traditional pi private pilot license. That's a lot of money. I mean, my, a lot of the reason for some decline in interest in aviation is the sheer cost, isn't it? The, the training uh, package, actually, we're, we're uh, for un people who are not pilots, we would include training with the, the oh. purchase price of the vehicle. Oh. Typically, but if you were to go out and get sport pilot training today, it might be $3,500 to $5,000, depending upon how long it took. Yeah. Most people complete sport pilot training about 35 hours. Right, right. And do you expect to be selling this in 10 years' time in either a, a fuller hybrid and pure electric form? Do you <coughs> see that roadmap, or, or is there, are you going to wholeheartedly go into vertical takeoff? Well, we, we are definitely going into vertical takeoff, yeah. yes. but, uh, but for this particular product, it really depends upon battery technology. Mm. Uh, today, the battery technology is not there to make this all electric and as safe as it needs to be, uh, meeting minimum range requirements and reserve requirements. Um, in the future, as battery technology improves, we'll continue to reevaluate that. Um, but th there is a safety aspect also that comes from having more range. And with yes, today's yes, uh, battery technology, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. unless you go to uh, very high aspect ratio wings, more yeah. like a sailplane, uh, yeah. it, it's very difficult to achieve minimum reserve requirements. Mm. Uh, mm. Now, one of the, the other folks at the show, George Bayan by Aerospace, they, they yes, have they have yes. a very attractive, very high aspect yes, ratio yes, wing. Yes, yes. Very, very efficient. Yeah. It's, of course, the vehicle isn't designed to drive yeah. on the road, too. Yeah. So, yeah. But that's how you can do it yeah. in, an, in a, an initial launch product. Yeah. Uh, and they're also targeting you know, the trainer market. So it's, it's a little he, bit different. I think he was yeah. saying he gets 30% extra range by putting uh, solar on his uh, vertical f surfaces. Do you have any interest in that? Uh, it, for us, our battery on board this is so small mm. that it, 
it's unlike, we're, and we're very, very weight sensitive. Uh, mm. So it, it really depends. It's something that we'll look at. Yeah. Uh, it's something that we, we would yeah. certainly consider. We certainly have plenty of wing area. Yeah. Um, but uh, really, the, our, our goal is to, to start to change the way people think about yeah, personal yeah. Oh, absolutely, one step at a time. Uh, yes, try to make yes, it more practical, yes. more safe. Yes, yes, uh, yeah. Put it in people's yeah. garages so no, that no, you see sure. it driving around. But I mean, I, it's That's interesting true. to us because we're trying to look in ID Techx very much at the future trends. Yes. We've got Alta Devices here again who are exhibiting. That's a kilowatt per kilogram with gallium arsenide mm. per voltaics. And so you wouldn't worry about the weight of that, but well, it, you, the cost at the moment is appalling, but right it's now, coming down. That, right but, now I can buy cells, power cells that are five kilowatts per kilowatt. Right. So right. I, you know, and that's oh. extraordinary. But and they and they have decent cycle life at those at those uh, right. specific powers. But I can't get the specific energy that I would want for it. So those ah, are maybe yes. 120 watt hours per kilogram. Uh, yeah. Many of these all electric aircraft concepts that you read about in the news today yeah. are counting on getting up into the 300 to 400 watt hours per kilogram range. So it's it's. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, it's yeah. hard to buy that stuff off the shelf. It's made yes. in, in laboratories yeah. right yeah. now, but yeah. uh, it's not quite yeah. there yet. So, yeah. you know, obviously we're, we're staying very yeah, yeah. closely attuned to what's yeah. happening in the industry. Yeah. And yeah. as the battery technology develops, certainly it can enable new and exciting products because mm. if we can go all electric, there's a lot of potential there. Yes. Assuming the cycle life of the battery is yes. also uh, sufficiently attractive yes. to dramatically change the cost equation. But one of the interesting things is when you look at uh, these all-electric vertical takeoff and landing concepts, yes. uh, with today's battery technology, you would have to, uh, even if you could get the specific energy up to where it, uh, you know some of these laboratory yes, cells yes, are, yes. they don't have the cycle life. So you're yes, going to have to so replace the batteries so. very frequently, which means that it doesn't actually save uh, money in the end. No, no, and I realize. That, that, yes, and yes, that's, that's yes. a big challenge. No, so that's where I'm hoping to see development. Uh, yes, yes. Because if it's not commercially effective, it's not yes. commercially competitive, it's going to have a very hard time. Because on some level, you have to get to the point where you need the minimum level of safety. Yes. And then you need to be caught, uh, competitive in the of marketplace. Course, yes. So but, but, uh, uh, right now, yeah. it's not quite there. No. On well, one last question, and this is a, mm -hmm. another strange one. Uh, a number of people in aviation now with small aircraft, um, they go into a thermal like a glider does, the propeller goes backwards, charges the battery on the mm -hmm. way down. And you have to go pretty steep, yeah. but you can charge the battery. And yeah. then when you're um, parked on the grass, you, um, in a windy day, the propeller goes backwards, charges the battery. Is that interesting to you? Is, is that sensible or not? Uh, if you have it anyway, yeah, certainly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, to do that sort of thermal soaring and to get a significant fraction of power. Again, I think you're talking something like a sailplane configuration. Yeah, very high aspect yeah. ratio wing, yeah. Uh, yeah. which uh, you know yeah. absolutely can work yeah. very well for yeah. uh, you know uh, that type of market. Yeah, the, the sailplane type yes. market yeah. for a uh, practical longer range transportation aircraft. It's it's a little bit. Harder, yes. you know the yes. the. Uh, but I absolutely expect we'll start yes. to see because there's a lot of movement in this direction. Yes. We will start to see higher aspect ratio uh, yes. platforms, more efficient aircraft yes. uh, as time goes on. It's a That's very exciting wonderful. space. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, next time we're going to interview you. I hope about the vertical takeoff activity, which obviously can't go pure electric anytime soon. But uh, well, no, it's wonderful, and I do hope over the coming years we're going to see all that progression because what you've done is truly groundbreaking, absolutely thank you. awesome, and thank, thank you very much for making our whole show come alive. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you thank for having you. us. I appreciate it. Yeah.